Global International Academy, Mathematics Grade 5, prepared and presented by Mr. Shaker Shabani. Dear students, welcome wherever you are. Your math teacher Shaker Shabani wishes you enjoyable and useful times. I'm happy to provide the addition and benefit to you. I'm ready for any question or inquiry. So, our unit today is Unit 24, Assess and Review, pages 106 until 111. We will try to revise all previous lessons. So, starting by our objective today. First objectives, convert fraction to percentage. And comprehend mean, mode, and median. And revise the probability of certain events. So, starting by first one fractions, decimals, and percentages. So, sure that we learn this uh, lesson or this vocabulary, but we need to re explain again and revise again some exercise. We'll try to practice our skills today. So, first question What is 0 0.7 as percentage? So, I have here many propositions, like you see here. 7%, 70%, and 3%. And our question to choose one from this proposition correspond of this decimal number. So, starting by the first way, you remember that if I want to change any decimal to percentage, first way, you can simply multiply by 100. And you know how to multiply decimal by multiple of 10. And you will get 70%. Some of you, you say, why? Simply because 0 0.7 equal, if I want to change it to fraction, 7 over 10. Now, I have 7 over 10. I need to change it or to find which percent correspond of 7.10. So, I need to find the equivalent fraction of 7 tenth. Simply, I will use multiplication or division only. Please take care. I will not use subtraction or addition to find what? To find the equivalent fraction of this fraction. So 7 over 10, how I will change 10 to be 100? Why I want 100? Because I speak about percent. Percent that means per hundred. So I need to change 10 to will be 100. So sure, I will multiply by 10. Up and by 10 down, I will get 70 over 100. And this is our percentage. I will substitute 100 by the, the symbol of the percent. Now, going for the second question, what is 80% as a fraction in its lowest terms? So please take care here, my dear. I have two parts of my question. First part, I have to want, I have to find the fraction correspond of my percentage. Second one, not only a fraction, in the simplest form. So, let's change the percentage given 80% to fraction. It's easy. I will substitute this percent by this line and 100. So, 80% equal 80 over 100. 50% equal 50 over 100. And like that. Now, but no one from this proposition equal of 80 over 100. What you have to do? Because I did not finish yet my second part of my question. I did not simplify 80 over 100. I will simplify 80 over 100. But how? You have many ways. First one, I will search the GCF, the greatest common factor between 80 and 100. Sure, that's 20. So I will divide by 20 in the numerator and by the 20 in the denominator. And I will get 4 over 5. So this is exist. First preposition. It's correct. Is it clear? Now, our third question is what is 3 fifths as percentage? Now, I have to change fraction to percentage. Like I have to find the equivalent fraction, but in the denominator 100. So it's easy. In this case, we need to change fraction as a percentage. So I will ask myself how I can get 100 from 5. How? How I can change 5 to be 100? With multiplication, I will multiply by 20. 
But if I multiply the denominator by 20, don't forget to multiply also 3 by 20. You will get 60 over 100. 60 over 100, I will remove this 100 and change it by this symbol of person. I will get 60 person. So this is our correct answer. Now, just follow this video because they will give you the more information about how to change or to convert percentage to fraction and fraction to decimal. Okay? Now follow the, this video. Hello, Ben. My name is Tim. I was told that you're an expert on fractions. I'm having a problem with fractions that Kyle and Jan are not able to help me with. Hi Tim, I know a lot about fractions, but I wouldn't consider myself an expert. Have a seat and let's try to sort your problem out together. Okay. So Tim, what seems to be the problem? I need to convert fractions to percentage. Oh, percentage? Yes, that's right. How does one convert two-fifths into a percentage? Well, before we begin, do you know what percentage means? Hmm, if I'm not mistaken, it means per hundred. Yes, that's right. A percentage is a number expressed as a fraction of 100. A fraction of 100? Yes, so actually, it's very simple to convert a fraction into a percentage. Let's try it with two-fifths. Now, if percentage is a fraction of 100, what do you think you can do here? I think you can look for the equivalent fraction as a fraction of 100. That's right! So how can you do that with two-fifths? Well, if you divide 100 by 5, you get 20. That means we need to multiply both the numerator and the denominator of 2 fifths by 20. So the equivalent of 2 fifths is 40 over 100. Okay, so now, what do you think the percentage is? Is it 40? Bingo! Oh, that's not so difficult after all. Actually, there's an easier way to convert a fraction into a percentage. What's that? See, all you have to do is multiply the fraction by 100. Really? So if I want to convert 3 fourths into a percentage, I just multiply 3 fourths by 100? Yes. Okay, so 3 fourths multiplied by 100 is 300 over 4. 300 divided by 4 is 75. So 3 fourths is equal to 75% then? That's right. Thanks, Ben. You really are an expert on fractions. I'll come back again if I have more questions about fractions. All right, study hard. Now, going for this uh, third objective, statistics. So, please look at this chart. I have here player and Goal scored. In the first line, I have players Sam, Andy, Eddie, Lan, James. All these players, every, everyone, get a number of goals. So for example, Sam, he put eight goals, Andy, four goals, Eddie, eight goals, but Lan, six goals, and James, nine goals. So to find the mode of this chart, of uh, this data, the mode is the number or the most repeated, this number here. 
I have only eight repeated two time. The number four only one time, number six only one time, number nine only one time. So if I want to find, so the chart show the goals scored by the players and a football team does some score above the average number of goals for the team. Now, mode, median and mean are their types of average. Now the mode, like I say now, the mode is the most common number. Two players scored eight goals. So that is the mode. But the median, how we can find it? The median is the middle number when the numbers are listed in order. So I have to do something. First one, I have to make order my list. Second step, I have to find the middle. Now, this is my list. Eight, four, eight, six, nine. Is it ordered? Sure, no. I want to order it, but from list to greatest or from greatest to least, anyway, no difference. I choose to make it from list to greatest. Four, six, eight, eight, nine. After that, I will remove the first one and the last one. Like that, I will get a new list, six, eight, eight. I will repeat the same process again. I will remove first one and last one, still only one number. This is our median. But sometimes still two numbers, for example, eight and four. In this case, what I have to do? Which one I will choose like a median? Look, in this case, you have to add these two numbers, eight plus two will be 10. And after that, divided by two, you will get five. Take care on this note, please. Now, third one, the mean. To calculate the mean, add the numbers and divide the total by the number of items in the list. Like that. I will repeat, upload again with my chart. First step, I will add all the numbers of goals. So I have here 8 plus 4 plus 8 plus 6 plus 9. After simple calculation, I will get 35. Now, my second step, I will divide the total of this items, 35, by the number of the items. So, 35 by 5. From where get a coming 5? Because they have here 5 players. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 35 divided by 5 give me 7. Is it the mean? Yes. This is our mean. Okay? Now, going for the third objective, third concept, new concept, Probability. Now, with activities involving chance, such as dice, playing cards, coin tossing, or spinners, we can use probability to decide on the possible or likely outcomes. Even chance is an equal chance of something happening as not happening. We also say a one in two chance or 50 50 chance. So, like this bag contain many different beads my question what is the probability of picking out a red bead now this is my bag how many possibilities i can get when i pick out one bead look it's possible to take at first time this bead or maybe this bead or maybe this green bead so i have 12 possibilities. I have 12, be 12 beads and 6 of them red. From these 12 possibilities, I have 6 possibility to take red. Okay? So the probability of picking out red bead is 6 from 12 or 6 over 12. After simplifying this fraction, dividing by 6 in the numerator and dividing by 6 in the denominator, I will get 1 half. So I speak about event probability. 50-50. Now, what is the probability of picking out a blue bead? It's different now the case. I have only two beads. There are 12 beads and only two of them blue. So it's 2 from 12. So the probability of picking out a blue bead is 2 from 12, 2 over 12. And I will divide it or I will simplify by 2. From the 
top and from two on the bottom, I will get one sixth. So one over six. So I will. It's not even. Not not equal. Now in this theory, this means that for every six beads picked out, one would be blue. Is it clear? So look at this video to more explain also the concept of the probability. Chance and probability. In our day-to-day -day life, we often come across many statements, out of which some are sure to happen, some are impossible, whereas some may or may not happen. Let us consider some statements. The sun setting in the east. This is impossible because the sun rises in the east. Increase in the side of a square results in the increase in its area. This is sure because area of a square is equal to side into side. Tomorrow will be a bright sunny day. This may or may not happen as its occurrence depends on the sun. Father is younger than his son. This is impossible because father is always elder than his son. A leap year consists of 366 days. This is sure to happen. On tossing a coin I will get head. This may or may not happen because when a coin is tossed there are two possible outcomes. Head or tail. On throwing a die I will get number six. A die has six faces, that is, numbers one to six. Hence, this may or may not happen. From this table, we understand that there are some statements which are sure to happen. Some are impossible, whereas some may or may not happen. For example, when we toss a coin, it has two possible outcomes, either head or tail. Sometimes we get the predicted outcome, and sometimes we fail. Let us now perform an activity to understand this better. Take a coin. Toss it 20 times. Record the observations as shown in the table. In the shown table, H represents head and T represents tail. From the table, it is clear that there is no fixed pattern for the occurrence of head or tail. It is a matter of chance that, in a particular throw, we get either head or tail, as both are equally likely to be obtained this means total number of outcomes are two, head and tail, out of which favorable outcome is only one, that is, getting head or tail, and thus the probability of getting head or tail is equal to one upon two for each. Now if we count the total number of heads and tails, we find it is 12 and 8, respectively. Thus, the probability of getting head is 12 upon 20, that is, 3 upon 5, and probability of getting tail is 8 upon 20, that is, 2 upon 5. If we increase the number of observations, we find that the probability of each event approaches to 1 upon 2. Let us now learn some facts regarding probability. The events which are sure to happen have probability equal to 1. Those events which have no chance of happening have probability equal to 0. And events that have many possibilities can have probability between 0 
and one. Now, if the die is thrown, the possibility of getting either one, two, three, four, five, or six is equal. That is, for a die, there are six equal possible cases. Hence, the probability of each of the numbers one, two, three, four, five, or six is one upon six. Let us consider one more example. A bag contains three red balls and seven white balls. What is the probability of getting a red ball when one ball is taken out randomly without seeing? Total number of balls in the bag is equal to 10. Out of these, number of red balls is equal to 3. Thus, the probability of getting a red ball is equal to 3 upon 10. Now, thank you for your attention and see you again.